This is going to be the last edition of What Really Matters before the political season comes to a close. So we're just going to enter our final thoughts about what we think about the election. This is What Really Matters with Tyler and Matthew on KOWL 1490 The Owl, Tahoe's Talk. First of all, I think a lot of people miss parts about the election because they listen to the news, they listen to CNN, PBS, NBC, ABC, and... The, sure, those are great news sources. Like, yeah. I obviously recommend listening to them from time to time. Yeah, and, and listen but, to a broad variety of news sources. <laughs> yes. Well, I think anyone listening to us probably already does, yeah, that's to true. be fair. We're a little bit niche. <laughs> but I, th- I think when people watch those, they kind of miss uh, a lot of the political season because it's it's mostly local. And local has the most direct impact on your life. Yeah, voting voting for the president, it may change the general direction of the nation for the future. But if you really want to impact where you are, you should probably be voting for the people who make decisions for where you live. Yeah. Well, of course, that makes sense. People, next door neighbors, obviously have the most influence on your life. People in Washington, D.C. probably don't have that much influence. I mean, unless we became a police state. But... Uh, that that's that's probably not going to happen it's not. In, in this political season. So what I want to bring up is uh, I think I think this edition should serve to inform voters about what's going to be on the ballot, which includes the propositions in California. Yeah, we we've got we've got this big box up at the top that everyone pays attention to the whole year. We've got uh, Trump versus Clinton, but then there's a lot of boxes at the bottom. The down ballot race. We need to focus on that too. So we're going to try to give you a summary of what's going on down there. And I, I think it's I think it's even interesting. Uh, most people probably voting don't know much about the down ballot race anyway, so it must almost be a blind vote for some people, uh, yeah. which which makes it even more important to inform. Well, yourself. I mean, it's more historically divided along party lines. Usually, people just vote for the party they're in. But we're we're not really going to be talking about the candidates. We're going to be talking about the propositions. Yeah. And after the propositions, I think we'll go a little bit into the election because we might as well talk about the candidates before. One of them gets elected. And by the way, uh, right now the polling shows that probably Hillary Clinton will win. Yeah. We're just we're just putting that we're out there. Say, we're saying the facts. It looks like Hillary Clinton's going to win. And and later in the episode, we might indicate some sources uh, that that back up our claim. We're not yeah. just we're not just predicting it like political pundits. Yeah. We're we're using facts and and numbers. And we don't I don't think we would claim to be political pundits. I don't think no, we're I don't, quite at that I don't level. think we're anywhere close to being a political pundit. But first of all, uh the propositions are between proposition 51 and proposition 67. So that's that's 17 propositions. Yeah, that's quite right? a few propositions. Um but probably most people aren't that educated about them. So let let's just get right into it. Let's start with proposition 51, first one on the ballot. Well, Proposition 51 is about education in schools. Basically, if it was approved, there would be $9 billion of funds that the state would be able to carry out to schools if schools requested it. Now, this is one of those interesting ballots because... Or, not ballots. This is one of those... One of those interesting, interesting propositions. Interesting propositions, because if you're against it, then it almost makes it seem like you have to be against education. Yeah, it... I mean, to be fair, this is about allocation of education funds, you know? This this isn't about, hey, let's bi- let's build, you know, 20,000 schools across the country, you know. It's it's about allocation it's about allocation of funds. It's about deciding how those funds get distributed. So first of all, the main argument against Proposition 51 is that it's just not fiscally responsible. Uh Governor Brown is against it, which which really speaks to the f- fiscal irresponsibility, I guess, of the pro- proposition, because usually Democrats are uh, – when people talk about Democrats and fiscal responsibility, they're usually opposed to each other. It's usually Republicans that talk about how they yeah. want to spend less money and that they want to have less government bureaucracy. Yeah, but Democrats tend not to, not to talk about that as much. It's not as a hot, as a hot-button issue for that sort of – so maybe it should uh maybe it's telling that uh then a democrat governor brown is against it (laughs) but (laughs) but i think i should explain some of the reasons why he's against it so obviously uh i mean it will give funding to the schools but the schools will have to apply for the funding which means that they have to submit a form that says we need funding to build new infrastructure maintain uh the schools which means that schools who have uh more skilled people at writing 
proposals and saying we need more funding, we'll get more funding, right? A poor yeah. district with with no staff, or, or I mean, no no staff that has the time to write these complicated uh, argu arguments for why they need funding simply won't get the funding. So the whole argument is that it, it'll further the divide between rich and poor school districts because rich school districts will uh, will receive more funding that they already have. Yeah. And it, then poor school districts will receive a little bit of funding, but not that much. It's the same problem we had back in our first Wealth Inequality episode. It just keeps piling and piling upon itself. I mean, of, of course, the, I mean, it's not like that's the catch-all for the healthcare bill. Of course, it's going to introduce those new options for schools to get funding. The question is, of course, whether you think it's a valid line of reasoning that you're going to divide schools even more. Just, you know, vote on your conscience. We're going to skip over a few propositions. Uh, yeah, most of that... 17 propositions would give us two minutes to go over each one. So, probably, so obviously, probably not a great idea. there's a time constraint. We want to go into them in as much detail as we can possibly go. So I think yeah. the next one we want to talk about is, is Proposition 55. This one would extend personal income tax over it would people who made over two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. Now, okay. I think this one kind of relates to the last one because we were talking about the divide between rich and poor districts. Yeah. So this is one of the ways that people want to heal the divide uh, between rich and poor. Of course, there's the argument to be made that pure income tax probably isn't going to help much. Um, maybe, maybe in California, we have a lot of more wealthy actors and things like that here. But there is an argument to be made that personal income tax just kind of targets upper middle class and doesn't really target the people that would bring in a lot of money because most of their money would come from things that don't count as um, income. Yeah, ink. Sorry, I income. The, just blanking there. Yeah. Yeah, I, I blanked on income for a second. Usually, these things come in through um, stocks, bonds, things like that, investments. They're, they're usually bringing in money other ways. It, it, personal income doesn't really affect the top 1%, people like that. But, I mean, it could be argued that it'll bring in money for other programs if you don't really want to heal that divide too much. Yes, and this is in contrast to the politicians right now. Donald Trump wants to decrease taxes for everyone. And Hillary Clinton wants to create a new tax bracket similar to this proposal, but hers would not be as extreme. She wants to create a new tax bracket that would that would slightly increase the taxes of people. I, I think making millions, uh, not just two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So that might that might uh, uh, kind of do a better job than um, than this proposal. Yeah. But I, I think raising the taxes on upper middle class people is kind of like a way to patch wealth inequality in a way that won't exactly fix it. No. It's it, almost like it's just appealing to people without solving the problem. It's it's a quick fix that doesn't really solve anything. But, I mean, to be fair, it will bring in a little bit more money for other programs. So. Which, by the way, uh, the bill says that it will support Medi-Cal and education, which is funny because yeah. we were just talking about providing $9 billion. What's well, interesting, that first proposition would probably affect how this proposition's funds would be distributed. No? Well, yeah, likely. And I think also uh, Governor Brown says that, uh, I mean, I keep referencing Governor Brown. Well, he but... is the governor of California. So. <laughs> right. He is, he is quite an authoritative source on politics. Yeah. But I, he says it's fiscally irresponsible. It would put California in debt. You know, I wonder whether he'd be okay if this was passed <laughs> and to fund, to fund Proposition 51. But I don't, I don't know anything about that. Yeah. The next proposition I want to discuss is Proposition 56. Right, Toba the tobacco tax increase. <laughs> this one is a huge one because it, it will definitely change the culture and how we look at tobacco. I, I mean, over the last few decades, tobacco use has, has gone down significantly. The CDC has said that tobacco use declining has been one of the great public health achievements of the 20th century, yeah. and I think this is, this is just a natural addition to that. And l l keep in mind, this isn't like a small increase. It increases the tax by $2 per pack, which, I mean, that may not sound like a whole bunch, right? But remember the price of tobacco packs and that the current tax is actually $0.87 cents per pack of cigarettes. So right now. This, yeah, this Currently. more than triples the tax on cigarettes. And there's some worries that this may disproportionately affect um, poor people. Yes. So traditionally, drugs uh, like alcohol and tobacco, when they're taxed, 
it's it's usually poor people that are receiving the tax because rich people don't really care about when alcohol is taxed. But poor people, a significant portion of their income is spent on tobacco and alcohol, which yeah. which has caused it. Uh, the these types of taxes are called sin taxes, meaning that uh, it's it's kind of almost it's punishing people for sinning, meaning that yeah. you know smoking cigarettes and alcohol is bad, right? That. And usually, the nice thing about sin taxes, right, is that people usually won't argue against them. It's a nice way to earn some extra revenue because when you're saying we're going to tax cigarettes, nobody's going to stand up and say, well, I oppose taxing cigarettes. Cigarettes are great. You know. Well, I certainly think people would do that 50 years ago. Well, they would 50 years ago, but this is right now. I mean, we, we've, we've, we've gone past that. Well, we've changed the, changed the culture because it's not seen as a normal thing. I mean, in some, in some communities, or maybe not just community, but in some circles, it's seen as a normal thing to do. But generally nowadays, uh, people who are smoking are more outcast than they are normal. Yeah, well, actually, that brings up another interesting uh, part of this bill because it actually affects e-cigarettes. Um, the tax on e-cigarettes will also increase by $2. Which I think is interesting because e-cigarettes have kind of been seen as the next phase in, in smoking. I, I mean, as smoking has declined, e-cigarettes have, have gone up, yeah. which almost can be seen as a public health victory, right? Because people are shifting from a medium uh, that's that's typically been characterized by lung cancer, early death, and they're shifting to a medium which is probably still bad for you yeah. health-wise, but it's not as I would say inhaling hot vapor into your lungs probably has some side effects but but I, we don't really know for sure i mean i i have looked at some of the studies i've seen what some health uh officials have said and right now the the opinion is essentially the jury's out but it's probably not as bad as uh smoking cigarettes yeah now there's sort of two definitions going around for e-cigarettes right now you know there's some people who use e-cigarettes, you know, sort of as a way to quit smoking. And then there's the sort of vape culture that sprung up around e-cigarettes where you just grab them for recreational use and do them because, I don't know, you like to vape. Well, I guess for some people. It, it's sort of interesting. It lets them uh, capitalize on this new sort of hip culture, this new vape culture. You know, just $2 every vape, uh, you know, juice pack. It's, it's probably not going to affect people who vape as much as people who just buy uh, cigarettes. But, and it, it's not going to affect normal people. So no. I think, I, and the polling will, the polling demonstrates this, but it's probably going to pass. So yeah. expect to see a tax yeah. uh, on cigarettes. Expect to see your vapes cost a little bit more. <laughs> the next proposition I want to talk about is Proposition 57. This one's kind of like an empathy bill because it it expresses empathy toward inmates and people who have convicted crime, crime. So it's it's yeah. almost like a progressive way of giving them a second chance. Yeah, this is this is sort of an empathy bill for nonviolent criminals and a juvenile uh, ju people convicted in a juvenile court. One of the interesting things that it does, which I previously didn't know, but apparently up until now, of, I mean up until uh, when it passes, of course, yeah. maybe. I, mean, I think it, it looks like it's going to pass. As well. Yes, and and by the way, the polling for all of these bills that we've talked about so far has been yes. So it might just seem like we're talking about the negatives, but I think we're also just trying to explain what possible consequences will happen when yeah. it does pass, which all of these bills probably will. Yeah, At unless least... somehow our radio show reaches all of California and yeah. they decide to change. Everyone sees, everyone sees the downsides. <laughs> but we will get into later uh, a related bill on the death penalty, which doesn't have popular support. Yeah, and we actually would want to have that one pass, I think. I, personally, my view is that I, I think we should have it passed. But back okay. to Prop 57. It's, it supports increasing parole and good behavior opportunities for felons convicted of nonviolent crimes. And... Prosecutors prior to this could choose whether to try people as adults, try juveniles as adults. I think when they met certain requirements, you know, like w when they when they'd committed certain crimes. I don't know the full story, but um, well, I'm sure you couldn't do it on misdemeanors. Yeah, yeah. There, there's probably... <laughs> hey, you stole that chip bag. We're gonna try you as an adult. <laughs> well, what would what would even be the difference? But I, <laughs> <laughs> but I think the, the interesting uh, part about this is. I I mean I didn't realize that that was even that was a thing. Don't you think you'd I, if I was in charge of it in the first place? I'd only want the judge to be able to try people as adults. Yeah, the I've... prosecutor's not in a position to act neutrally on that issue. <laughs> I, I I mean I don't really know that much about this, but it seems like a good idea 
to allow judges to decide whether to try people as juveniles, because that's kind of their job, you know? Well, to and judge. And also, if you put it on the, if you make it the prosecutor's job, it's almost like adding more risk. Yeah. Because now that it's, it's more risky to try them as an adult, because now you have to prove that it's an, it's an adult crime and that they had adult awareness of the, of the crime. Which, it's risky for the prosecutor, it's worse for the pre- person being tried. Yeah, worse for defendant, you know? And, and it, it's pretty much just, uh, I mean, what's the point of trying children as adults? I, um, um, I, I, I think we should keep that in the judge's hands. I think this is, I, uh, after this passes, I guess it'll work the way we thought it worked. <laughs> but sort of interesting to know that that isn't how the court system worked. We're just going to move from the court system to edu- back to education. Yeah, we don't know that much about courts. We're going to go back to something we know a little bit about. So this this next one, Proposition 58, it will allow uh, standard bilingual education in schools. And yeah. actually, this is repealing an earlier bill. Yeah, that... Proposition 227 from 1998, uh, the English and Public Schools Initiative. Uh, this one, it... It it made students who have limited English uh, skills in public schools, it, it made them take English classes, English-speaking classes, not really bilingual classes. It tried to limit how much um, other languages they were exposed to and tried to just move them straight on to English. It was trying to really push them towards, you know, the national language, which I think uh, had good intentions. But here they're trying to allow more bilingual classes to be taught. So they're going to repeal this and see if they can get that passed. And, and this one's kind of hard for me. Uh, just to summarize the two opposing sides of this proposition, on uh, the people who oppose this are part of a, a wider movement called the English-only movement. Mm-hmm. And these people see that America's greatest strength is its ability to unite peoples, right? So having a common language means that everyone's saying the same things and every everyone's on the same uh, level, right? Because we can right. all communicate with each other uh, with a lingua franca. But then people who are opposed to that point to the numerous studies that say that if you speak two languages and are bilingual, then it's it's more economically beneficial. It's it's uh, socially beneficial, yeah. obviously. And it, it's better for the person as a whole. It just increases their cognitive capacity. The, when you're when you're brought up learning two languages, it actually changes the way your brain develops in a positive way. So I I do see pros and cons for both sides. By the way, English is not the official language of the United States. There is no official language of the United States, but but there is an official language of California, which is obviously English. English. Yeah. So this is uh, this is just bilingual versus English only. Where I, I mean, this one is probably yeah. will pass as well, like the other ones we'll talk. We'll I mean, talk. California is a very interesting state at, compared to the other states in uh, the United States, in the sense that a lot of people sp- speak Spanish here in a way that doesn't occur in uh well we're right by the border of course uh, well of course right I so mean, it's definitely if out of all states to pass something like this we're definitely it yeah the next one the next proposition proposition 59 makes more con- makes more sense in the context of the general election and it's what it'll do if it passes is that it'll say that california's position on the supreme court case uh citizens united versus federal election commission is that the state supports repealing such a decision in the sense that they don't want uh, politicians to have unlimited uh, third party support at at the current moment, supporting politi- politicians through super PACs is, is simply free speech. And yeah. the, and the Supreme court held that up in citizens United. That was, yeah. that was the great Supreme because, court case a few, a few years back. Because money is a form of speech and a cor- and Corporations are people, all this sort of uh, shenanigans that lets you use money however you want because money counts as free speech and you can't impede free speech. So, I guess even calling it shenanigans is kind of uh, demonstrating our opinion, but... <laughs> yeah, uh, it, 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 was, it was a lot of... It, it had to go through a lot of legal steps to get where it is. Let me just put it that way. But obviously, like as, you, as you would expect, people who are for this, uh, well, for the proposition against Citizens United... Mm-hmm would point to the fact that it simply allows rich people and people that appeal to corporations to receive a whole bunch of campaign money, and then people who, who appeal to the common folk and poor people to receive no money because they're not getting the super PACs. So it's it's just about getting money out of politics uh, or keeping money in politics, depending on your perspective. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's really all I have to say about yeah. Proposition it, 59. This next one is probably the one me and Matthew want to talk about the most. 
Yes, it has to do with the death penalty in California. Which, a little background, there hasn't actually been someone executed in California since 2006. Actually, in, in, in the San Quentin State Prison, they built an execution room and haven't executed anyone in it. And the reason why is simply the appeals process takes way too long. In, in fact, that's, that's one of the main criticisms behind the death penalty, is that obviously you want to, you want to prove that the person is really uh, the mm-hmm. criminal that they got charged in court with. You don't want to just go around killing people willy-nilly. That's... No, that's, that looks terrible on the court system, which has happened before, so they want to yeah. make sure that it never happens again, which is the reason why they go through such a lengthy appeals process. But, but the crux of that is that because they go through such a long appeals process, it actually ends up costing more to have the death penalty than it is just life in prison. So at that point, you have to you have to ask yourself, well, is it more important to have the death penalty uh, because of the fact that it's 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 almost a a retribution? Uh, Yeah. Do we want to get revenge by killing people and spend more money to do that? Or do we just want to sequester them away from California, sequester them away from society? And California seems to have already decided this back in 2006 when we executed the last person who's been executed in 10 years now. It seems like this would just make it California's official position that we don't execute anyone. Of course, some people might want to leave that option open for a really big case or a really terrible uh, criminal, but I... Which is already pretty yeah. much what's true. I, 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 would, I would rather have the death penalty be done away with, but we can do a whole episode on that later. Which we might. But I, I also want to point out that Proposition 66 also has to do with the death penalty, but it's more about the procedures and appeals themselves. So that's a separate issue. Proposition 62 would simply repeal the death penalty. But one thing we uh, we probably we, we said this, but this is the only proposition I think we're talking about that probably won't pass. Currently, the yeah. public opinion, uh, pretty much both sides, liberal and Democrat, liberal not so much, but yeah. pretty much both sides of the political aisle still agree on uh, death penalty. So. We still think we should be killing criminals. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> well, the last one I want to talk about, Proposition 64, is probably the proposition you've heard most about yep. because it has the greatest potential to change the Calif- or change the culture of California mm-hmm. as we know it. And if you haven't heard about it, it's simply legalizing marijuana yeah. and, and... Uh, adult use of it. So people over 21, it would it would be regulated similar to alcohol. I mean, there would be taxes on it. It would provide new revenue. Yeah. It, I mean, the idea is we already have sort of a weed culture in California. I don't think anyone's going to deny that. That's true. And the idea of this is if you make it legal, you can capitalize on it in the same way that Colorado did. Yeah, several states have already done this. So this yeah. we aren't really setting a precedent. We're more just looking to the other states. Yeah, we already looked at their experiment. It worked pretty well for them. So California is now trying to pass this. I think it has 60% approval now, and it seems like people are pretty set. Yes, this one ideas. has a very low li- likelihood of of uh of not passing so it's pretty much guaranteed at this point and because the historical trend is that this has definitely uh been moving in the direction of pass uh over the last few years more and more people are definitely saying we should legalize it yeah uh i think listen if you're if you're listening to this you already know what you think about the legal use of marijuana. We're not going to sway you. That's something that most people are not undecided on. Some of no. these builds are more esoteric. They, um, you know, people really haven't heard of them or considered them. But this is one that yeah. we're probably not going to add anything. Yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna bother preaching to you about this one. Vote however you want, but it seems like marijuana is going to pass. All right. I, I hope this has educated you a little bit more about what's on that ballot just below Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. And it's kind of provided uh, you our perspective on what we think about the ballots. Uh, and also just the knowledge that most of them are going to pass. So get ready for these yeah. things to change in the course of California's history. Yeah. All right. Well, this has been What Really Matters with Tyler and Matthew on KOWL 1490 The Owl, Tahoe's Talk. Goodbye. Goodbye.